Hello friends, <laughs> welcome back to the garden. It's been a few weeks since we've been here, but we have lots of things going on. We have a new farm friend, Tom the turkey. Stay tuned, we'll tell you all about why we got him. We have things blooming. We have the new chicks that got moved outside. Robbie's building a whole new obstacle course. So many exciting things. We're fencing in the yard. We have so many future plans. So stay tuned to see what we have going on. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed this week's video and it inspires you to get in your garden and create some magic for yourself and your family. A few weeks ago, we discovered we had a fox trying to get into our coops and we've never had that problem before. Uh, and we've always had, well, the last few years, we've had male, a male turkey <laughs> on the property. And we didn't the last six months. We had uh, Thanksgiving, we had processed the rest of the turkeys we had because to be honest with you, that noise can be a lot. Um, but recently I wanted to get a turkey again. So I reached out on Facebook and uh, me and Rob have an awesome friend and he had an extra male turkey who was actually getting picked on by some of the other ones. And so it worked out perfectly. Uh, treated him in a live turkey for one of our freezer turkeys. So it was a great, uh, great exchange. But Tom gets out every morning and I just wanted to show you how, what a nice turkey he is and how easy it is to get him back. So ironically, um, I felt the need to film this morning and I didn't quite, I was like, oh, I'm, it's cold. Like, I just want to go back inside. Uh, but as I was saying about the turkey, we had gotten him because we've had um, a fox, a predator problem. Um, and we had a few birds, we have a few birds that refuse to sleep in the coops and they sleep in trees at night. and. Uh, when they jump down in the morning, the fox has been waiting for them. The other morning I found one buried in the goat pen. Um, so for anyone thinking goats would protect your chickens, <laughs> they do not. Um, but I just, I wanted to share with you uh, what I discovered when I came over this morning and, and take you along with me when I figure out what happens. So I always know something's a mess when I see feathers on the ground. So I walked up to the chicken coop and saw feathers and started looking around and then noticed up over here, it's also, see right there, a pile of feathers. And I don't see there's this one white bird from last year that again, we can't keep in a coop, um, who is not roaming around this morning. So, and these white feathers in the yard I'm gonna make a guess that something got her. And I'm gonna take a look around and see if I can find her. So I know Mother Nature does works in her own way and I'm not here to control it. But one of the things that makes me sad when, not makes me sad, that's not. Uh, one of the things that 
guess I feel a little bit guilty about is I believe in all of the life being honored and when the foxes or coyotes um, get one of the chickens, they do not honor its life. Most of the time they kill it just for sport and bury it somewhere. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually collecting all of the feathers that I found um, in my own way with doing something with them. As I still look for the bird, I am honoring her life in the way that I can. This is the little building we use as our chick brooder. It is outside our back porch. It was actually built as a cat house, but cats prefer the back porch or the yard. Ellie and Robbie got it all ready yesterday. So one wall is just, that's the side of the garage. And then we have a little window there. And a little window there. The roof has some plywood, but it's really just rubber roofing put over it. This is just a little structure. It's not meant to be warm. It's just meant to house them. And so what we'll do is we'll put the plate, the warming plate over here in the corner. Ellie and Robbie got this is their little feeding tray. They made little stairs and a brick for them to come up to it. Uh, they jump and play there, but with the 24, excuse me, 23 chicks, uh, this is plenty of room for them. And with the windows, that's Penelope jumping on the roof. And with all the windows, it makes it really nice for ventilation when it starts getting warm. Penelope was actually given to us by a neighbor of a friend. She was a rescue. She was a feral cat down in Florida and after one of the hurricanes they were so overwhelmed that um, our friend's neighbor's daughter brought her home from college and where they lived there was a lot of predators and they didn't necessarily want to let her out. Um, she's a really, really nice cat. But she doesn't like other cats. And she's kind of a loner, but my girl gets all the mice and chipmunks. She brings them on the back porch for Ziggy to eat. If she brings them to me and then demands that I feed her wet food. <coughs> Don't you? <coughs> yeah, I love you too. That's not really what she wants. She really just wants more wet food. My pretty girl. This apple tree was given to us last year and we are developing part of our front meadow garden down here and so I'm actually planting some blue pines and I've already set out we're gonna be doing some cosmos and some nasturnum a mixture of annuals and perennials to add a pop of color to this area of the yard Hey, Robbie, what are we working on? We're working on... Right now we're just making tires. Hmm. 
Ooh, and they're bringing, digging tires for not so course. I like it. And that's to go over here. That is a platform. There's a rope swing right there. And so they go up on the, the platform there and swing back and forth. So Rob is helping Robbie dig in some tires because he is uh, designing his own obstacle course as it will end up being back here in the treehouse. It looks good, bud. I like it. This is the garden that I showed you last week. It sits here behind our kitchen. And this is our back porch. So we have fencing for this garden up over here. And then all this side of the yard. This is our shed, which is going to be the uh, goat house. And then this is all the coops. So that, this part of the gardening basically takes up a lot of fencing. This is our secondary garden, which we've yet to do anything with. And so because that's where the goats are now and the chickens, uh, I've always wanted this part of the yard fenced in so we could start leaving moose back here. Uh, he won't jump over things to escape. As you can see, he's on a lead right now. He won't escape, but if it's free range, he's just gonna go. And really he wants to be out here with all of the animals and so I've been we've been talking about putting in a fence and every year we have uh, we like to improve on what we already have and so we aren't doing chicken tractors this year and so Rob took the panels down he's using some uh, free wood that we got from a local church that was on their deck. And it's fencing in all back here. It's looking good. So it'll it's connected all back there. That's a gate. This is the goat pen. So we can't get into the woods. Goat pen, just walk through the gate barber. That is all blocked off. This area is all blocked off. And so up there where Robbie is, the only way you can really get out of the yard is straight ahead. And so we have a lot of this uh, green, again, four foot length uh, garden fencing. And so that's gonna go up from the side of the house there, all the way over here to the wall. And then, Ziggy just found me. The goats are gonna be moved into our shed and all of this area cleaned out and it's gonna be turned into pasture. So the goats will have all of this area to free roam as pasture. We'll have the gardens and the pit here is another garden. That's where we do ice baths. And then the chickens will have their area. This is why we're fencing it off. He is so happy just to be back here with the chickens. And pretty soon he'll just be able to stay back here. My cool boy. Are you happy? <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, hi, baby.